are recording and there will be people I'm sure popping in. Christina will be letting into the orientation, but I wanna welcome you to the University of the Incarnate Word School of Professional Studies, new student orientation for fall. Um, it's really early, so we're really glad you did take the time to join us this morning. You know how our Saturdays are precious to most of us. My name is Valerie Vargas and I am going to be conducting the orientation along with some of our other advisors and feel free to uh, turn on your camera, but mute yourself, please. And then if you have any questions or comments, you can enter them into the chat. We'll have someone monitoring that as well. And uh, let's get started. So I want to real quick, Valerie. Oh, I'm yes. so sorry. No, I'm so fine. sorry. Um, I don't see a waiting room for me to be able to let people in in the participant thing. Can you double check and make oh, sure that I'm a co-host? Yes, absolutely. Let me make Thank sure. you. In the meantime, I'm going to let all of them in, and then I will. Um, let me check that right now. Gotcha, girl. Okay, you should have access now. All right. Okay, so let me introduce you to our advising team. Uh, we have at the Northwest Center, Jackie Gonzalez, Jackie Gonzalez, Kelly Wilson is with her there as well. Uh, at the Alamo Heights Center, we have Melissa Flores and Christina Rollison. Um, at the Northeast Center, which is where I'm at, it's myself, Valerie Vargas, and Mary Banfield. We have Adriana Gutierrez, our student enrollment specialist. Most of you have had your first contact was with her and getting registered for classes. Uh, Robert Barclay is also at the um, Alamo Heights Center. We have Sean Ford, our student success advisor. And Priscilla Johnson is one of our advisors, and she is located in our, at our Corpus Christi Center. Also with us today is Jessica Fada, and she is our director. Um, so we're absolutely thankful that she's here with us and we love her. <laughs> so let me. Okay. So let's talk about the student's role. I promise you we won't be here too long, okay? So the student's role, uh, we want you to be sure that you develop a plan um, that'll help with, that will help you achieve your academic goals, your career, personal goals, whatever your reason for coming back to school is, you wanna always have a plan. Schedule regular appointments with your academic advisor. Uh, there should be no less than one meeting during each trimester to review course of study and register for classes. So what that means is typically every other term, you should be communicating with your academic advisor to schedule an advising term. I always say after the second term. Um, some do after the third term you've been here, but really you should stay in touch as much as possible. Um, here's one thing not to do um, or try not to do. Try not to email your advisor and say, tell me what to register for or tell me what to take. Um, we want you to be actively involved in your degree. So what we would prefer is that you look at your degree plan, look at the schedule posted and determine what classes you think you might like to take moving forward, then we'll help you with that. Afterwards, we'll tell you this is the way we want to, you should go, this is how the courses that you should take in what order. Um, that's why those advising appointments are so very important. So we want to make sure you, you um, stick to those, okay? We want you to consult with your academic advisor if you're making changes like to your major, um, class schedules, dropping a class, adding a class, whatever the case may be, you should always consult with your academic advisor. It's recommended that you keep a folder and in your folder, it could be electronic, it can be um, physical, a folder that has your unofficial transcripts, your program requirement checklist, semester grade reports, um, and your, your schedule worksheets, like if you're working out a plan for you. And that's just your degree plan, you can print those out uh, through uh, via PDF and you know mark it up. That's what I used to do. So, oops, I went too fast. The student and advisor. So, your advisor will assist you in many ways, including referring you uh, if needed for services, problem solving, student concerns, academic assistance. Um, ongoing advising is especially necessary before registration periods. It's a, it's very important uh, to to maintain your success in the program. Typically, um, we assist you with 
registering for two classes together that are not going to cause you to be bald at the end of the term. So we want to make sure that you're taking the classes you need, but that you can handle together. So uh, as an advisor, I would never recommend a student, let's take two math oriented classes. I'm gonna put you in statistics your first term and put you in finance too. Something that we would never recommend, but sometimes it happens, but that's why we're here to help let you know what you should take together. And if you see that you're registered for something that we're just like, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. We'll, we'll definitely let you know and give you some recommendations. Okay. Please, please, please remember your student ID number. Memorize it. I know we've got tons of numbers that we memorize now, passwords, things like that. It is, it is so much easier when we're communicating with you. If you shoot us an email and you include your student ID number in your signature line, it, it goes so much smoother, especially if you have a very common name. As you can imagine, we have a number of students at UIW and us having to hunt you down in the system may not always be that easy. So I always just recommend that when you're communicating, just make it a habit to always include your student ID number. So this is your degree, and this is what I was speaking about previously, that we definitely want you to have an active role in your um, program. So the advising process depends on thoughtful participation of the student with your advisor. So we work together. We're just not going to boss you around, and we don't want you to just simply say, tell me what to do. We, we want you to actively participate in, in the program in your degree. So the final responsibility for meeting all your academic requirements, both institutional and um, academically is with you, the student. So we'll help guide you in understanding your degree plan, but ultimately meeting those requirements is, is gonna be your responsibility. But that's why we're here to help you, to help you guide you through that process so it's not so daunting. Um, and I am going to talk a little bit about Cardinal Apps. Hopefully all of you have had a chance, an opportunity to go through and log in to your Cardinal Apps account. Every student at UIW is issued a Cardinal Apps account. In Cardinal Apps is a bunch of apps. So it's your student email, Office 365. Office 365 is where a Word, a PowerPoint, all of the, the suite is, and it's free to you as a student. So um, that's where that's located. Your degree works, that's your degree plan, official degree plan maintained by the registrar's office. Canvas, which is our LMS, that's our learning management system. Basically, it's what we use to hold the classes online. So Canvas, um, even if you're going to class face-to-face, -face, you will have a Canvas account and your class will be listed in Canvas. Inside Canvas will be your um, syllabus and your textbook information. It also is where you'll go to register for classes, uh, to drop a class if necessary before the first week. Uh, UIW Engage, that's where your uh, community service hours need to be documented if you're an undergraduate student. And CashNet, that's where you pay your bail. So it's really important that you have access to Cardinal Apps and you're familiar with it. If you have any technical difficulties, you can contact the UIW Help Desk at the number below. They are a 24 seven um, operating system. So you can call anytime and get assistance with that. And that's what Cardinal Apps looks like. It literally is just a bunch of apps. And there are a whole lot more apps than what I spoke about. Um, so feel free to peruse through there, get familiar with it. Um, you'll utilize most of them. Okay, I'm gonna hand it over to Christina Rollison. She's one of our advisor twos uh, with the School of Professional Studies. And she's gonna speak to you a little bit about um, Cardinal email. Good morning, everyone. Um, glad y'all could join us today. We're going to talk um, about Cardinal email and then we're going to go into uh, what degree works looks like and your degree plan. So every one of you will have a specific email address that's just for UIW. Make sure that you've logged into this and you can actually link this to a personal email account. Help Desk has those instructions if you'd rather just have the one email account that you're always able to check. But it's really important that you keep up with that Cardinal email is everything from us from school is going to be fed into that email account. And the other thing with it is if you email us from 
your cardinal email, it's a lot easier for us to figure out who it might have been that sent us the communication. But do try to remember that when you email somebody with UIW that you're including your your name and your student ID number. It makes it so much easier to be able to help you from our end. But definitely make sure you have access and you are always checking your cardinal email. So Valerie touched on degree works and cardinal apps. Degree works is a great tool. And what's nice about it is when you're looking at your degree plan in here, it's exactly what we use. So we're going to be seeing the exact same thing. This gives us your student information, your degree requirements, your core curriculum, your major, and your general elective section. So it breaks down the entire prescribed list of courses and what we need to make sure that you achieve throughout your time with UIW to get you, you get you to your goal. Go ahead and go to the next one, Valerie. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So when you're looking at degree works, it breaks down all the requirements of your degree. And what I look at right now is a bachelor's degree. So at the top, once you've logged in, you're going to see the requirements just for the degree itself. These are specific not just to you, but to a bachelor's degree. So you're going to have to have the 120 hours total of hours taken. So then that comes into, we might not have on your degree plan, you might not have a complete 120 hours prescribed to you on that degree plan. And that's where your general electives come in. So us as advisors, we're here to make sure that we get you to that total. And then it goes into of those 120, how many need to be upper division, how many need to be taken at incarnate word, and it just keeps going. So this is a great tool to not only check what classes you're going to need, but to make sure you're meeting those big picture goals with the degree. One thing that helps us out here is your official transcripts. So make sure if you haven't sent in all your official transcripts from any institution that you've attended, we need to get those in ASAP. Because as soon as we can get those in, the soonest we can get them articulated and added to degree work. So we make sure that you're not duplicating any credit that you could have potentially already taken. So we want to get those transcripts in and make sure they're official because otherwise we're just going to have to do it again to get those official ones in. But we will do our best, even with unofficials as advisors, to make sure we're not letting you, we're going to keep you away from duplication of courses. So then when we're looking at a master's degree, we have the same block. It's a lot smaller. The master's degree, you're looking at 30 to 36 hours that we need to make sure that you meet all together. And we need to get you completed within seven years. Undergraduates, you have 10 years. If there's anything that you have taken previously that is older than that, we can still look at options to be able to use those credits. But we definitely want to try to keep you within those seven and 10 year periods on the two different types of degrees. All right, so after that main block of what the level of degree requires, we're going to go into your classes that are prescribed to you. So this is looking at a bachelor's degree. And this is the core curriculum. So as you can see, there's different classes listed. There's green check marks. This means that it's been satisfied. And you can look over to the right-hand side and see what it was satisfied with. This specific student had transfer credit from Florida State. So it got transferred in, and it shows that those classes are satisfied. The ones that are red, which just pop down to world literature right there, that means that that class is still required. So this helps you understand where you are. Don't think of the list and degree works on the degree plan as linear. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 that you have to take in that specific order. This is just groupings. Think of it more like that. This is everything I need to take up here, but it's not listed in a specific order. Now, there are some that are going to have prerequisites, and that's what the advisors will help you out with. And Valerie, I think we're going to swing back to you so you can yes, talk to us about Canvas. Yes, ma'am. So Canvas is our LMS. It's our learning management system where we hold our classes for online students um, and where all students have access to their uh, course syllabus and textbook 
and uh, instructors can utilize Canvas um, for announcements, for assignments, discussions, even if you're in a face-to-face -face class. So I wanna make sure that you definitely are accessing Canvas. Um, so Canvas can be found as an app in your um, uh, Cardinal Apps account. And like I said, it has your courses listed that you're registered for, your announcements from the instructor or from uh, School Professional Studies or UIW. It has your um, syllabus and textbook, uh, different modules for the different weeks, for the eight week and the term, assignments, discussions, grades, all that good stuff. Um, we, uh, this is what it'll look like when you first log in. This is just a dashboard. Um, I always say click on your dashboard because that's where you're gonna see your classes that you're registered for right now. Um, so that's the best place to go is your dashboard when you first log in. They are in an announcements as well. Okay, so uh, I'm also an adjunct faculty. Um, so, so are a few of our advisors. So this is my class, one of the classes that I teach. And um, what I recommend is once you hit your, find your course, you click on courses on the left-hand side, you'll see the course that you're in. This one was a summer one class um, and, and it'll take you immediately here. Okay, so then you'll click on training your class. Say you're in training and development in my class and then it's gonna take you into the homepage. So what I recommend students do right away is click on announcements once you're in the homepage of your class. See what the teacher instructor is uh, saying to you. Any announcements, urgent alerts, things like that will come through announcements in uh, Canvas. And then once you've gone through and read you know, all of the announcements from the instructors, you wanna click on modules and that's gonna begin your class. In, inside modules, should have been a link. So inside modules, it's broken down by weeks. It's also their inside modules is a, a student orientation. So if you've never used Canvas before, um, we're going to try to make it as simple as possible. And we're just going to help you float through um, Canvas. And it, it'll take you step by step, show you everything you need to know. An introduction is in there. Um, and it, it's really important. So I highly recommend you do that. As soon as you get into the modules, do the student um, orientation through Canvas. And then you can start jumping right in. But if you have any questions about Canvas, reach out to your advisor. We can help you answer any of those questions. And if we can't, we'll find somebody who can answer those for you. So you're not out there in limbo. Uh, one thing I want to mention about Canvas is on the right-hand side of your Canvas, you always see the to-do list. And this is where your automatically your calendar pops up of what's coming up in the class. Week one's assignments due, discussions, things like that, and it has the date. That helps remind you of, of things that are upcoming. So as soon as you log in, you'll be able to see that. Um, and everybody has a different homepage um, for their class. This is my homepage and everything is interactive. So anything, any icon that you click on in the class will take you where you need to go, or you can find it in the modules as well. So, okay. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Robert Barclay. He's our other advisor too for a School Professional Studies. I'm gonna let him talk a little bit uh, to you about conquering the classroom, class attendance, things of that nature. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hey, listen, um, we're gonna talk about uh, connecting with the instructor. It's very important that you reach out to an instructor if you have any questions about assignments or anything of that nature, or just don't understand how to work something in your Canvas. Uh, another resource for you while you're in the classroom is your, are your classmates. Sometimes you don't understand something or you miss something, reach out to your classmates because a lot of times they may have the answer for you, okay? Um, keep up with the assignments. This is, your sessions here are only eight weeks long. You do not wanna fall behind, you do wanna keep up and make sure you ask questions. Um, ask the professor questions, ask your classmates questions and of course reach out to your advisor. If you uh, can't get answers there, we'll find answers for you, I promise you. And uh, have fun. Next. Okay, class attendance. Okay, this is an accelerated degree program. Like I spoke about earlier, it is only eight weeks long. So it's important that you attend all your classes. Okay, it can have an impact. Um, for example, in a regular term, you miss one, uh, you miss one class, you miss one week. Missing one class in an accelerated degree program is the equivalent of missing two weeks. Um, regular attendance is important and the instructor will set the attendance policies for the class. So that's who you're gonna reach out to. For example, if you know you have to miss a class ahead of time, reach out to the professor and let them know 
so they could possibly work with you on the assignments um, to keep you from falling behind. Uh, the drop policy. There are no automatic drops at UIW. If you enrolled in a class and just never attend it, you will not be dropped from the course. Okay, if you need to drop a class, you need to reach out. Um, the deadline to reach out with 100% tuition a, um, refund is Friday of the first week. Anytime after that, you're gonna be charged the whole cost of the course. So if you drop on Monday of week two, you owe the whole tuition. If you need to withdraw from a course, um, after that, you need um, and want to receive the grade of W as opposed to if you're failing a class, you can withdraw up to Friday of week six. Both of these need to be done by 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, I do want to point out the deadline for dropping in week one, students can drop themselves. Anytime after that, you need to reach out to your academic advisor if you drop from the class. Next. Okay, graduation policy. Um, you can apply for graduation one year out and we recommend that you do. Okay, it's up to the student to apply for graduation. Once you apply for graduation, an audit's going to be completed on your um, the degree. You'll be sent what classes that you're missing um, and anything you need to do to complete the program. It's also important that you check your cardinal email. Sometimes your advisor might email you at your personal email, but the registrar's office will only, only reach out to you and on your cardinal email. Additionally, before you apply, you need to get your 45 hours of community service completed. It's never too early to get started on those guys. Um, don't wait till the last minute. Too many students do and it does cause you problems. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Okay, so we're gonna jump into student services. Um, I am going to have different uh, representatives from the different departments at uh, UIW speak today. So um, the first one that's up is going to be our student success advisor. We're lucky in school professional studies that we have our own student success advisor to assist you. He's also a Title IX uh, coordinator. So I'm going to introduce you to Sean Ford and I'm going to let him take over and um, let him talk to you about all the resources we have available for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction, Valerie. Can everybody hear me okay? Awesome. So again, my name is Sean Ford. I am the Student Success Advisor and also the Deputy Title IX Coordinator for the School of Professional Studies. Just so you know who I am. Uh, let's deal with uh, the more, uh, the less pleasant, rather, <laughs> part of my duties as Title IX Coordinator. So uh, you will be hearing from the Title IX office. You'll be uh, assigned to a module called Vector Solutions. Um, which you will complete uh, according to our Title IX guidelines. So Title IX is our sexual harassment, sexual assault training. It is federally and state mandated. It means all of us have to go through that training. Students, staff, faculty, and even contractors have to go through Title IX training. Uh, we just want to make sure that you're safe and happy and everyone has a good experience. And in order to do that, uh, there are things that you'll need to know. So you'll be assigned to that training. If you're not, you can contact me or you can contact the Title IX office and we can get you uh, into that training. There will be deadlines and you will be getting emails until you complete it. Unfortunately, they will harass you until you complete it. It's just very, very important because it's tied to our federal funding. So even if you don't have federal funding, uh, some of your classmates do. And if some of you don't complete it, it can be lost for all of us. So that's why it's so, so, so important. So look forward to that, look out for that. And if you can't find it, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is right there on this page, handy for you. Um, and your advisor can always send you to me. Now, the more fun part of my, or the most fun actually part of my job is a student success advisor. So what I'm here to help you with and I'm dedicated to doing is helping you find the kind of services that you need to problem solve, to succeed in your classes, uh, to do uh, career guidance, to do mock interviews, especially now that we've pivoted online. Uh, another important thing, we thought we were over it, but we're not. Maybe some of us are having whiplash. I know I am now that the pandemic is resurging. Um, I can refer you to counseling services. We do have counseling services available. And, uh, you know, those are available to students. However, if you have any issues, 
outside of uh, outside of that window of being a student, for instance, you have family issues, we can also do referrals, we can problem solve, we can find you help uh, when you need help. So I don't want you to think that there's no help available for you. There's tons of help. I've put in the chat, hopefully everyone can see it, our tutoring services page. We have a ton of tutoring services for you. We have a, an online 24-7 platform called Smart Thinking. So that's where you can get tons of tutoring. Even if you're online, even if you're not in San Antonio, if you're deployed, you can go to Smart Thinking and get tutoring Theoretically, I'm going to say theoretically 24-7. It depends upon the class. If it's an introductory class or a standard math or English class, probably pretty easy to find an advisor or a tutor rather. Um, however, if you're looking at something like microfinance and you want to do it Sunday and the assignments due Monday, um, that's just generally never advisable, honestly, I'm going to just tell you. But uh, it's it's also you're probably not going to be able to find a tutor in time at you know at 3 a.m for microfinance because that's a little more pocket so always make sure and even with the easy classes i'm going to go ahead and suggest always make sure and do things ahead of time most of our our um our tutoring services and that includes our online writing center they suggest uh, at least two weeks out to a really good suggestion and at the very minimum a week out before the assignments due. that way you can change it that way you can learn what, what's going on with the assignment you can really do your best, whereas you know if you do it the night before not going to be your best. So that, that's generally my suggestion, but please feel free to contact me for any services that you need. Um, now, Title IX reporting, I'll just leave with that. So Title IX reporting is all done online. It's done directly to the Title IX office. And uh, I believe everyone you're speaking to now is currently all of our staff, our administrators, are mandatory reporters. So what that means, and you'll, be, you'll learn more about that in your modules, uh, as a mandatory reporter, so if you tell us of anything that we think might be a Title IX violation, and we don't get to uh, we don't get to discriminate here, we don't get to uh, discern what went on. That's not our job. Our job is to report it by law. We have to go online and report it to our Title IX office. So even if it was a joke, it doesn't matter. We have to report it. They have to investigate it. So I, I, uh, we want to be very of our um, of our classroom demeanor, et cetera, um, and be aware that everyone deserves to have a, a, a discrimination and harassment free education. Just have fun and you know be be kind and courteous to each other, and hopefully it won't come to that point. Um, but you'll learn more about that in the modules. And again, if you have any questions, I am uh, ready and available to assist you. And I will hand it back over to Valerie. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Okay, so now we are going to have Samantha Ramos from our business office. Uh, tell us a little bit about what their office uh, has available for you as a student with UIW. Samantha, are you there? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So hi, my name is Samantha Ramos. I am the business service coordinator for the UIW business office. So just a little bit about what our office does. Um, if you have any questions regarding your student bill, you can always contact our office. Um, also, we handle um, some of the discounting. So if you um, are active duty military, a veteran, or a DOD employee, um, we would verify and um, get that discount added to your student account. If you're funded by a third party, you definitely want to reach out to us as well because we do um, we do bill for a lot of of different third party groups. Um, one of them is tuition assistance and um, you know a couple of other ones are um, through Ed Assist as well. So you're definitely going to want to get with our office. Um, and really that's it. Um, I think that um, they already touched on you know making sure that you do view your student bill once you get registered for classes. Um, we, our office we actually do send out student bills at the beginning of each month, if you have a balance, um, these are sent to your student emails. So, you know, we just ask that you definitely check those uh, because those are pretty important. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, um, feel free to email us or give us a phone call. We are also doing um, Zoom appointments for those of uh, for those students who, for whatever reason, would prefer that method. 
um, on our business office webpage, that's where we have the Zoom link. And I also recommend taking a look at our page because we have a lot of really great information on there. And I, I think that sums up our office. Thank you, Samantha. Would you mind putting the link to your uh, page in the chat for us? Yeah, of course. Okay, of course. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, so next we have um, Michelle Beasley and she is one of our advisors at the Student Disability Services uh, Office. And she's awesome. She also used to be with SPS years ago. So uh, she was my academic advisor, actually. So um, Michelle has been with UIW for quite some time, and, and we really do appreciate everything she does for students. So I'm going to hand it over to Michelle. Thank you, Valerie. That was a great introduction. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to live up to that. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about Student Disability Services Office and what we do. So basically, if a student has a disability that, or any kind of condition, um, disability, that is um, prompting barriers in the classroom, that's what we're here to try to break down. So we do that in the form of classroom accommodations. So that could mean you might have a disability in the area of a physical condition or a medical condition, psychological, or even learning disabilities. So any of those areas, if that is your diagnosis, then we want you to reach out to us so we can coordinate you um, with some accommodations or with your faculty. And that also could include temporary accommodations. So you might be having a surgery or an, you had an injury. So things like that, we wanna hear from you as well. And then Title IX pregnancy, um, of course, Sean handles the majority of the Title IX, our part of this is the pregnancy-related conditions. So if you need accommodations for pregnancy-related um, situations, then certainly reach out to us so we can coordinate with your faculty as well. So the, the easiest way to do that is to just go to the main uiw.edu webpage, and then you can search in the search bar for disability or student disability services. And that'll take you directly to our steps to get connected with our office. So that entails completing a request form, uploading your medical or professional documentation. And then um, also there will be a contact after that to kind of discuss what are the barriers that you're facing in the classroom? And then what are some reasonable accommodations that we can put in place to eliminate some of those barriers? So that's basically what we do. We work with you and the faculty we send the faculty your actual letter of accommodations, and that only includes your name, your classes, and what the accommodations are. We don't release your personal, private you know, information about your diagnoses. That's just between you and our office. We give professors what they need to know, and that's what the accommodations are. So we'll work together to come up with a proper list of accommodations, and then we'll get those out to your faculty upon your request each term. So. That can be an ongoing um, engagement with us until you graduate. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. My number's on your screen. I'd be happy to chat with you because you might not know if, you know, we do get calls, do I qualify for accommodation, so to speak? And so we can talk you through that process. And so the most important thing is, is that you reach out early as early as possible because accommodations are not retroactive. So just keep that in mind as well. And you are in an accelerated term. So that's, you know, that's another factor. So we, we take all of these things into consideration and come up with those accommodations that'll be appropriate for you. Thank and you, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Will you put your, if you haven't already, your, um, uh, link to your web page to Student Disability mm -hmm. Services in the chat for us? Yes, certainly. Thank you so much. Okay, mm -hmm. so the Office of Financial Assistance wasn't able to join us this morning, so I'm just, I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail, but I, we can answer questions if you have any in the chat. Um, most of the advisors and myself are pretty familiar with um, how financial aid works for our students in SPS on the accelerated program. So they are located in the UIW Chapel Building on Broadway campus. Their website, uh, we can put that in the chat as well. Um, Christina, will you do that for me? And then uh, their email as well. 
is there, you can speak with an, uh, a financial aid advisor and they'll be able to assist you with completing your um, FAFSA, answering any questions regarding your financial aid. I will tell you that once you submit your financial aid, your FAFSA, and, it, and you are registered for classes, they will be able to pull your uh, financial aid through and be able to see how it will be applied and if you're needing extra or if you have plenty. So it's always best if you have any questions or concerns to touch base with the Office of Financial Assistance. And one of the other things that I'll caution you on is when you drop classes, W's do affect your financial aid standing. Um, that's, a, that's a government rule. So you can end up um, putting yourself on a probationary period and not qualify for financial assistance. If you have too many drops or your completion rate falls below 75%. So one of those things um, that we want you to keep in mind when you are considering dropping a course. But if you have any specific questions, feel free to feel free to reach out to their office. And now I am going to turn it over to um, Byron, who is in our military and veterans center here at UIW, and he's going to present a short presentation to you. So Byron, I am turning it over to you and I'm getting your PowerPoint out right now. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me just pull that for you. All right. Well, hello. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Byron Pettis from the UIW Military and Veterans Center, and I will be giving you all a, a quick little brief on using some of the VA educational benefits here at UIW. Next slide, please. All right. So the UIW Center for Veterans Affairs was our, was our old name. We're now the Military and Veterans Center, and we're located in the Student Engagement Center on the third floor. We do have a student veterans lounge that is available for you know quiet studying, getting your coffee, whatever, whatever you need to do in there. Um, <clears throat> we serve an average of a thousand VA students uh, per semester, and we have been participating in the Yellow Ribbon program since 2011. Next slide, please. On our team, we have uh, Chris Vigil Ramos. She is actually working remote now, but she is available. We have um, Zoom hours daily, so you can definitely access her through those. Uh, myself and our director, Adriana Liao. Next slide. All right, in order to start using your, your VA benefits at UIW, the first step is to be obviously accepted to the university. And step two is going to be getting the certificate of eligibility from the VA itself. We are not the VA. We're a liaison between the school and the VA. So any type of official documentation that comes from the VA will have to come from the VA. And then if you look at the slideshow here, I have the two charts. Um, breaking down the list of requirements that we need to start using your benefits here. The Chapter 33 program is the post 9-11 GI Bill. The Chapter 31 program is the Veterans Rehabilitation and Employment Service. Chapter 30 is the Old Montgomery GI Bill. Chapter 1606 is for our reservists. And then for the spouses and dependents, the VA chapters that they're eligible for are Chapter 33, the post 9-11 that can be transferred Chapter 35, which is the Dependents Education Assistance Program and the Fry Scholarship. Next slide, please. All right, some important reminders. Um, make sure we've talked about it before, but submit all your transcripts because the VA will not be able to pay for any classes that have been applied to your degree program already. Tuition and fees are reported after that ad drop date. So you will still have a bill. The business office will reach out to you, letting you know that you do have a bill. Um, it, is, it is advised that you look at that bill to make sure um, it's 
there's no other charges on there besides uh, tuition and fees. The VA only covers tuition and fees and any related um, fees towards registration, confirmation fees, anything like that. Parking permits, insurance fees, anything like that are not covered. At SPS, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, to receive the full housing allowance for our VA Chapter 33 and Chapter 31 students, um, you do need to be in at least one in-person class per mini semester to receive that. All right, um, we do offer uh, a lot of student veteran organizations on campus. Um, we do have the PAY program, which is a peer advisor for veterans in education. And that's uh, kind of like a, a mentor mentee program where we will uh, you know, assign you an advisor that has gone through the program that you're going through that may have, might have even been in the same branch of service. And they're there to just help out. They, they've been around campus for a while. They know what's going on. So they're there to help you know, transition you. Uh, we are a yellow ribbon program. We do have a VA social worker that will start uh, coming to campus here during the main, uh, the, on the main campus during the semester. She'll be there twice a week and we'll get those hours out uh, once we finalize that. But she's there to help do any kind of um, talking, anything that you need to do with the social worker. That's what she's there for. Uh, we do offer veterans tribute stoles um, when it comes to graduation for free so that we can identify our veteran population there during graduation and, and thank you for your service. Uh, we also have a chapter of the Student Veterans of America on campus, and they will be start holding meetings here pretty soon. You do have to pay, um, just like any other student organization, you do have to pay fees, but you do get a free t-shirt, and they, <clears throat> they do help out do a lot of the community hours, um, community service and stuff like that. So it's, it's good to get in with that program, with that group. Next slide. All right, there is our Facebook uh, link. We do put a lot of information out on Facebook, so please give us a follow there. Uh, next, here is our contact information. So um, take down this information. If you need to use any, any VA benefits, feel free to reach out to our office. We are working in person. We are, like I said, we are on the main campus in the Student Engagement Center on the third floor. And feel free to walk in, enjoy the lounge, get you a cup of coffee and chat with us and look forward to seeing you on campus. And y'all have a great time. And that's all I got. Thank you, Byron. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate that. You I'm are welcome. Us, I'm gonna take <laughs> us back to our um, slideshow. Enjoy my um, Yellowstone there for a little bit. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> let me share my screen back so that we can get back to the orientation. And I think Aaron is with us now. So oops, no, let me see. Is, can you all see Aaron Cassidy in here? Hey, Valerie, I haven't seen her join and okay. I've been keeping an eye on the waiting Thank room, you. but I haven't seen her join yet. Okay, we're gonna come back. If Aaron is able, she had a, um, a conflict, but if she, um, if she joins us, we'll come back to her slide because that resource is extremely important, especially for our graduate students, but absolutely for everybody. Um, she is our distance learning librarian located on Broadway campus. She'll talk a little bit about the online writing center as well. So let me, um, let me go to the next slide for us. All right, Christina, take it away. All right. Now, just really quick, I wanted to do a, a stop here. I know we're giving a lot of information <laughs> and it is in a very short period of time. So make sure you're utilizing our chat box, um, open it up, throw your questions in there. Um, but keep in mind, we will have a question and answer at the end. But if you want to go ahead and start loading up your questions, that way, if we need to check on anything, we can go ahead and start doing that. But definitely throw your questions in the box because um, if you have a question, you're probably not the only one. So we want to make sure that we get you all the information you'd like to have this morning. And I'm going to so, back that really quick. Yeah. Just say there is no, there are no Silly questions or dumb questions, please know that. Um, ask anything you want to ask or that you're thinking about. We, we can answer it for you or we'll find an answer for you, but please ask. Absolutely, absolutely. Because 
you know, a lot of times, like even when I came back to school and I came back to finish my degree as an adult, there were so many things that had changed. You know, it was completely different from when I was 18 at a community college compared to I was 35 on our Broadway campus. Everything was completely different. It, you know, processes were different. There was actually internet everywhere. So it was, it was, it was a lot. There is a lot to take in and a lot to learn. So definitely make sure that you don't hold back. Let us know what your questions are. Thank you, um, Christina. Aaron's here. Aaron's here. Okay. So then we'll skip over and we'll go back to Aaron. Yes. Aaron, I'm so glad you could join us. Hi. We, we just literally went We're over like there. yes you are like right on time girl okay so uh, here's Aaron everybody I wondered because talking about things being different than when you were first going to school that's the that's the truth things change all the time so if you're used to doing it one way I mean when I was an undergrad um but there weren't there was barely the internet and everything was on uh, cds like if you wanted to search databases so there wasn't any logging in and searching online and you had to go find the physical journals and photocopy them so yeah you don't really do that anymore you don't usually yeah. do yes <laughs> everything's available uh to to get electronically although you have to it, sometimes you have to do some searching and that's where librarians can come in is to help you do that. So um, I don't know. Can I share my screen at all, or are you just gonna? Did you just want me to talk, to discuss? No, 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 I can, I can, I can give you access to share your screen. Give me. Okay, me great. Stop that share my screen so that everybody can mm -hmm. see. Absolutely, and then I will make you a co-host, Aaron, and help you find me. Oh, there's a lot of us on here. Okay, let me get Aaron here. Let's all just look at each other right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna help you. And see if you can share your screen. Okay, let's see. Some chats. Okay. okay, here we go. Yay. Yay. All right, so here's the UIW homepage. Everybody isn't coming in this way. I hope you aren't because you can't see anything here. <laughs> you can go to current students. You can also find library links in Canvas. There's a, an, a permanent UIW link in the left-hand navigation in Canvas. And then there will be other links often to library resources when instructors embed them. But you can also go, go to the libraries directly on this page, which is the current students page. And it's a really good and useful page because it has links to things that are not in Cardinal, Cardinal apps. Some things are, card, are in Cardinal apps and some things are not. And it's, it, it's, it's easy to find if you're on this page pretty much because things like the bookstore, the links to SPS, Title IX, all of those things are here and they're not necessarily in Cardinal apps um, or, in can, or easily found in Canvas necessarily. So the library has a link up here and then this is our homepage. So everything you should be needing when it comes to finding journal articles, or ebooks, other than textbooks, you should be able to find from this page. So you can find databases and journals, use databases by subject, and that will help you find the articles that are related to a particular course and assignment. And then you may also find uh, resources by going to the research guides, and all of the subjects are here in the middle. And then all uh, the courses that have specific um, guides are also here. So sometimes a course will have a library instruction where a librarian will actually come to your class by Zoom or in person, and that would be usually me, or else you may just use one of the discipline guides. So there, they, they give you links to all of the things um, for outside research, uh, or journals, eBooks, and all that kind of thing, uh, also streaming videos recommended websites for the subject area. 
So they're good subject resources and they all have links to me and they have links to the writing center and the tutoring services and also APA because a lot of people get very um, nervous about APA. So if you use something like our APA style guide, it gives you links to all kinds of reliable resources for APA, including in more these tutorials. And they can, and I encourage people to do those up front and not when you're in a bind, because sometimes you'll have an instructor who's really into um, having it be a stick a stickler for APA, and you get a little worried about that. These types of resources can be really helpful for helping ease your anxiety about that. So if you have questions about resources um, with regard to your subject area and your courses, your program, or specific th things about APA, then please contact me and I can help determine if, it's, if, if I can be the one to help you or if you need help from somebody else uh, for a subject specific question or for the, like the writing center. Does anybody have any questions? The other thing I'll say is that when you access resources from off campus, the only thing you have to remember is to sign in with your same UIW credentials. It will bounce you in through Cardinal Apps just to verify you. Or if you're on campus, it won't even do that. So if you have trouble with library resources, just ask us. And you can always ask a question at, if this tab appears, because that means that somebody's sitting there waiting on chat to help you immediately or you can um, contact me by email and we can Zoom or whatever you need. Okay. Great. Thank you, Erin, so much. So you can get back to your... <laughs> yes, I appreciate it, thank you. No problem. Um, am I sharing? Yes, I am, okay. Gotcha, all right. So now um, we are going to hand it back over to Christina. And uh, see. you can see my screen, correct, guys? We sure can, Valerie. Thank okay. you. All right. So just leading off, we were um, talking about questions. So make sure if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask any of us. I see that some people have already hopped into the chat box and are sharing some questions, and that's awesome. So even if you're, especially this is a lot of information, once you get a chance to kind of like evaluate everything that you heard today and things start clicking and you do have those questions, that's the best time to start reaching out to your academic advisor and building that relationship and getting those answers that you need. So one way, or not just one way, but many ways that you can try to keep up with what's going on just with school and what's going on with us is our social media outlets. So we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we have LinkedIn. And the ones that are showing here are specifically for us, it's specifically for your division of UIW, the School of Professional Studies. When you follow these, you're not going to get information that might be pertaining to the School of Medicine or to the pharmacy school or even to the Broadway campus. You're going to be getting information and updates that are specific to the School of Professional Studies. So it's awesome way to keep up with us and see what's going on with your school and what we have to offer. Um, so make sure to jot those downs and give us a follow so you can try to keep up that way with what's going on. This is where more of the fun stuff is too. We'll give you deadline updates, but this is more of our fun stuff too. All right. Let's swing back to Cardinal apps and we're going to touch on one of the apps in there, which is called Rave. This is an emergency information system. This is where you can sign up to get alerts to your phone and email. And these are for when something happens on campus, on any of the campuses really, that is going to impact you. So let's use an example. The Northwest Center, where we hold our in-person classes, has a tendency to lose power. So when that happens, and we're not going to be able to hold classes, we're going to get a rave alert out to you so that you know not to journey through whatever hurricane storm that's coming through San 
San Antonio at the moment because we know along I-10 and 281 the flooding just starts to happen. So if you're going to be taking classes in person, this is definitely something that you want to make sure you sign up for. Um, if ever you're on the Broadway campus, that is something you also want to have because the back parking lot likes to flood as well and you'll get a rave alert that tells you to go move your car so this is this is going to come in handy um those are some more common situations if there was a situation where we had a dangerous situation keep using the word situation there that's bothering me um but if we have circumstances there we go that are dangerous for the students if we're having this a serious issue, we're also going to use these rave alerts. And so it's important that you have that immediate notification that you don't want to come to the campus right now. Um, it's just the best way to get the up to date emergency. This is happening. Do not come to campus. This is happening. We've shut this campus down. Um, so make sure to go into your Cardinal apps if you're going to be local and potentially going to be visiting any of our campuses and get this just so you are on the list to get to the alert in case something is happening. Okay, we're going to turn it over to Robert who's going to talk to us a little bit about our favorite subject these days, COVID-19 and UIW and what our plan is. Um, we also have a um, new mandate here at UIW, so I'm going to let Robert touch on that for us. Yep, the university and current order is following all the guidelines recommended by the CDC. Um, this includes the wearing of face masks regardless of your vaccination status and following safe social distancing practices. Um, if you need more information on UIW and the COVID, you can go to Cardinal Flight Plan at the, li at the link listed on this um, slide right here. Can you go to the next one, please? Okay, we do offer online tutoring options um, to our students. You can go to this link, um, resources, SBS tutoring. Um, in addition, you can also reach out to your advisor for online advising appointments. You have the option to do this through a Zoom meeting or telephone or by email. Additionally, we have an advisor uh, working Saturdays that's available once again for phone calls or Zoom meetings from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, if you need to speak with somebody and uh, something that can't wait until uh, Monday. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Robert. I uh, also want to mention that uh, those Saturday Zoom appointments, an academic advisor or an advisor is always on there. Um, and right now we we typically hold them at the Northwest Center in person on Saturdays. We rotate out so that if you ever just need a moment, you can't do it during the week, you can come in nine to one without an appointment um, and see an advisor. It doesn't have to be your advisor, it can be any advisor. So right now though, due to the surge in COVID cases, we, we're just being cautious and um, we're, we're gonna stay online and we're gonna stay remote. Uh, for that, but we're still there. We're still available. Actually, say Melissa Flores is one of our advisors who is not with us on here per se. I do see her on here, but she's using two different screens because she definitely wanted to make sure she was a part of it. But she is manning the um, walk-in virtual counter right now for advising. Okay, so let's talk about UIW and campus life. Even though you are part of the School of Professional Studies. You are still part of the University of the Incarnate Word. We are one university. And the student experience is available for everyone. Um, so on the Broadway campus, we have different uh, things that are happen that go on events, uh, the sporting events. They're, they're actually a lot of fun. Um, you get actually a free ticket with your student ID to attend any of the sporting events. Uh, we have a, a large student organization um, and Greek life on the Broadway campus, lots of honor societies, lots of clubs, lots of support groups. Um, there's campus dining as well. We have Chick-fil-A and Starbucks. And they also just have a really nice dining area inside the Student Engagement Center. That's where the UIW bookstore is also located uh, in the Student Engagement Center. And then we also have the awesome library that Aaron spoke on. Um, and then we also have a gym. So I say, I'm saying also, I'm turning into Christine, I'm saying the same word over and over again. Sorry, I apologize. We have a gym that you can join. Um, and I think the membership, um, I'm not even gonna say, it. I, it used to be $50, but that was ages ago. I'm, I'm dating myself. So 
they do have a gym. If you look up Wellness Center on the Broadway campus, you will find their information and how much it costs now to, to join. Uh, but it is a really nice facility. Okay, so student IDs. Um, you, if you're local, you will need an ID to access some of the facilities on the Broadway campus, especially if you want to check out a library book or things like that. Um, if you, if you want to use the computer labs, which are all open to you as well as a student, you definitely want to get your student ID. And there are um, different ways that you can obtain that. The first is through the Student Engagement Center, which is on the Broadway campus. I recommend this one, not that you can't do the other one, but I recommend this one because it makes, gives you an opportunity to get familiar with the, with the Broadway campus and where the different amenities are for you and your resources. Um, so they're in this, uh, it's called Student Life and they're on the third floor of that building. That's where it gets worse. And then you can also get it, um, I should say you need to take um, either on your phone, show your uh, schedule, your current enrollment, or print it out and take it with you. You gotta be a, an actively registered student to get a student ID. You can also come to the Northwest Center um, at 9729 Data Point. And you can call ahead to make sure that someone is there, but I was told that there is always someone available to, to do it. But just call ahead anyway, just to be proactive. And you can have your picture, um, your ID created there. Now, there is one other way to get your ID and that is to, um, you can email in a request or you can call in the order to your academic advisor. The only thing is we, we're not mailing those. So we don't put them in, in the US Postal Service or anything like that. So it, you would literally have to pick it up if you were doing it that way. And it does not have your picture on it. It's simply a, an ID card for UIW. That's an option as well. So you've got three options to obtain a student ID with us. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Christina to talk about, talk about our different locations. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to um, add that I did add the link in the chat for the wellness in the natatorium. Um, if you wanna do one or the other, just the wellness center or just the natatorium, it's $50. If you do wanna do both, it's $100 for the year. So I don't know what everybody's gym membership fees are, but I know that's definitely cheaper than mine. Um, so that is an option for you there. And that link is in the chat for you guys. Um, so we've got three locations here in San Antonio and one in Corpus Christi. These are gonna be the ones that are specific to your division of UIW for the School of Professional Studies. We have Alamo Heights Center. This is the one that is gonna be closest to the Broadway campus that many of you might be familiar with if you're here locally. This one is just a little west of Broadway. It's across on Hildebrand off McCullough next to St. Anthony's High School on that campus. So that is where our advising offices are for that center. The Northeast Center is going to be out in the northeast corner of San Antonio, kind of along 1604. It's going to be uh, actually within Rolling Oaks Mall. It's it's a beautiful center in there. It's nice and small, but it's it, it is pretty and sad. Valerie's got a very pretty center. Sure. And then we have the Northwest Center, which is where we do hold our in-person classes. This is going to be at I-10 in Wurzbach. It's very close to the offices for USAA, if you're familiar with that campus. We are on the back side of the optometry area, so our side of the building actually faces I-10. Here, when we do have Saturday in-person advising, is where you'll be able to find that advisor from 9 to 1, but as we mentioned, we're still doing that virtually right now through Zoom. We'll also have tutoring there for English and math on Saturdays. We need to get an update on that as to when we're going to reinitiate those Saturday tutorings as well. But Sean was touching earlier on, we have plenty of virtual and online tutoring options for you. So if you need some support in any area, make sure to take a look at those or reach out to Sean to get that information right now. Um, and this is also going to be where the advising centers our offices are going to be for that campus. I don't know if you mentioned it, Christina, but this is where mm -hmm. all of our face-to-face -face classes are. Yes, held. yes, absolutely. This is where our in-person classes will be held, yes.
Oh, sorry if I would unmute myself. So we are going to allow some time here to have um, to answer any of your questions, concerns, anything you might need to ask us. Uh, you can feel free to unmute yourselves and ask your question or share it in the chat box if you don't want to speak. But um, I'm going to give you guys about five minutes just to see uh, if there's any questions that pop up. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Actually, Valerie, before you do that, one of the questions in the chat is to go back to the Northeast slide. Oh, yes, absolutely. Let me go back. We are so, literally yeah. at the, oh, I'm sorry, Christina. We are no, I was just going to say that, yeah. that, that's that, that that's that pretty center right there. Yeah, yeah. We are, um, we're down in the lower level. Um, you will see a ton of Amazon vehicles in the parking lot. That's how you know where you're, you're in the right place. We're we're kind of catty corner to JC Penny entrance, but this is our own entrance. Our classrooms are inside our own area. So there are um, there are classes and offices there, and that's where I'm at, and that's where Mary Banfield is at as well. You're very welcome. Okay, so let me start my screen. There we go. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, anything? textbook questions, financial aid questions, um, just anything, anything you can think of. Um, we are starting classes Saturday uh, of the 21st. That's the first day of our fall one term. And if you have not yet registered for classes and need some assistance, please reach out to your academic advisor or um, you can reach out if you're, if you haven't made contact with your advisor yet, you can reach out to Adriana Gutierrez, who is our enrollment specialist. So, um, but any other questions, we'll be happy to answer for you. You know, Valerie, you mentioned, you mentioned books. And so um, really quick, just to talk about the books that you're going to be experiencing. Undergraduate students and our active duty military will get um, free books. And then active duty military at the graduate level continue to receive free textbooks. You're going to get books in three different formats. You're going to see generally, you're going to see ebooks. And so they're going to be within the link to get to those is going to be within your Canvas course. The next one that's going to be common is actually a PDF. So these are going to be free source materials that your instructors are going to share with you for review for the class, or it might be a full PDF copy of the book that they're going to be using. The last one that we don't really see too much of anymore is actually hardbound books. And these you'll be receiving these through uh, postal service if you're going to be using a hardbound book. Now, I know for myself as a graduate student in our program and with getting the ebooks, I am not an ebook study person. I am a flipper. I need to be able to flip to page 10 and then back to page 37 and continue on in that crazy format. So most of your books, if you want to get if you want to know that you're going to have a hardbound book, reach out to your academic advisor because we can get you that book information that you're going to be using. And generally, you can find those books online for rent somewhere. Personally, just speaking as a former student, I used Amazon Prime. This is not a plug for Amazon Prime. I'm just saying what I use. Um, I used Amazon Prime to rent my textbooks and I never paid for rental more than about $40. And so it was nice with Amazon Prime because it shipped to me free and then it came with a label. So I got to ship it back when I was done with the class. So if you are more of a tactile person like myself, we can get you the information so you can go out and find a resource where you can get those hardbound versions of the books if they're available. So just get with your advisor if you want that information. About three weeks before your class is about to start, three to two weeks before your class starts, and we should have that information for you. We had someone ask about the library link, so I put it in the, the chat, and then I will share it with you. I, I think Erin said it wasn't is it available in Cardinal in, can, in Cardinal apps? Let me check real quick. But I think that's why um, we included. I'm just going to check my Cardinal apps account and see if I can see the link. I thought there was an app for the library, but um, no. So that's 
that's the link that takes you directly to her page. I think her page, because she's so helpful, but it's in the chat and that's gonna take you exactly where she showed you and, and where to utilize those resources. And I don't know if Erin's still on with us, but I will tell you that Erin is extremely enthusiastic about helping. And if you need any help, she is like on it. Um, just be proactive and, and do it in advance. Don't wait till two days before your due date. So, um, but yes, that's the, that's the link. Does that help answer your question? Um, and then it says, can the required volunteer hours be completed through my employer? If not, is there a list of agencies? This is a great question because um, uh, Adriana answered the question in the chat, but I want to I want to share it with everybody. You can complete the community service hours with your employer as long as you are not compensated, as long as you weren't paid for the service. But I know we know lots of adult learners in their organizations already um, participate in volunteer programs. So they, they end up coming in with them already completed. So here's just a side note. You can submit anything you've done in the last five years from the date of your admission as community service. So typically, some of our students are done by the time they start with us because they've done so much. So that's an option. And no, graduate, um, graduate students do not need to submit community service hours. Um, in, uh, Adriana put in the chat that you can visit our Etling Center. They are um, the department that handles community service for UIW. They've got a lot of resources on there for people who are looking for volunteers. We also have programs that happen on the Broadway campus if you're local, if you're not, if you're not local, you don't have to do them here. You can do them in your area, just get involved in your community. Um, and um, yeah, that was it. I didn't miss anything in the chat, I don't think. Okay, those are great questions, guys. Anything else? Any other questions, concerns? Oh, there's one. For local students, I'm gonna hop in really quick. For local mm -hmm. students, like if you wanna actually go into the library or go visit Byron in the military and veterans office, you can get onto the Broadway campus. You don't need to sign up for a parking pass. So if you ever get an email that says buy your parking pass here, just delete it. You don't need to do that. So when you're gonna head down to the Broadway campus, if you're going there Monday through Friday, typically between any type of working hours, and let's make that as big of a window as we can, let's say eight to seven. You want to go in through the Broadway main entrance and it's at Broadway and Burr Road. You're, there's a stoplight there and you want to go in and there's a little circular roundabout and there's a kiosk there. You can stop at that kiosk next to the flagpoles and you can get a day pass that way. And they'll tell you where you're able to park once you have that and you can go and you can visit any of the offices on main campus next to that security kiosk. If you're just running in to drop something off like to the business office or maybe you just need to run in and sign something for financial aid, there's actually a 15 minute quick park that you can utilize as well. Um, if you're going to be there late in the evenings or during the weekends, it is open parking. So if you want to go study late at night at the library, you are able to do that without having to work, worry about a parking permit. So you do have access to the facilities on the Broadway campus. Just need to make sure that you either get your day pass or you're there in the later hours after working hours. Um, to be able to utilize though any of the facilities on main campus. And someone asked in the chat or just commented that they would love to see the community service um, opportunities here at, at Broadway. So if you go to the link that Adriana placed in there for the at Link Center, you can see the different opportunities. Um, we try to get involved as well as a group with SPS um, for those. When COVID hit, that kind of limited us. But the last one we did was a really cool one because we have community gardens at UIW and they're all over the campus. Um, so we brought, you know, we brought our families, everything. We got out there and we harvested. We harvested the, the spring and made ready the fall um, vegetables. So it was really good. And we give those, UIW gives the, the harvest, whatever we Cold and clean, and we give it to the food bank, um, give away locally. People will come to the school actually and ask for food um, 
that are used to the Sisters of Charity doing that for them over the years. So that's that was really fun. And there's other things, you know, that that you can that they have service projects. So it, it really is a lot of fun. But that's yeah, they, have, they have tons of service projects. Sorry to uh, butt in here. They have tons of service projects. If you're looking for one, I put in the chat too. Uh, I've spoken with the Etling Center, so we can do things like uh, some people are like, you know what? I I don't feel comfortable getting out. We can find you virtual work, especially if you have a special skill. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, you're very good at accounting. There are people looking for volunteer accountants. There are people looking for volunteer. And especially if you want to build career opportunities, I sometimes suggest that. I have people that they, they love our advisors, and I can see why. Um, and they say, I want to be an advisor. And I'm like, okay, let's get some experience. You can volunteer as an advisor, and you can volunteer uh, and be mentored by one of our advisors um, in order to do that. So, And that would count as your community service as well. As long as you're not getting paid for it, I've been told by the Center. They're fine with that. Another cool thing that they do on, on Broadway campus, I, I'm not sure with COVID if that's going to be possible, but they do a, a, a sort of trail of lights event, a light up the campus. And you, uh, it's actually a lot of fun because it's very Christmassy and Christmas spirit. And you go check the lights uh, with a group of volunteers to make sure the lights are all on and they're working properly and everything's safe. That's a really fun one. So there's lots of opportunities. So you can also check, you can check with your advisor, you can check on Etling Center, or you can check with me if you have a volunteer idea and you want to know if it will count. I can always check with the Etling Center if I have to, uh, but lots of times we don't, as long as, again, you don't get paid and there is someone who can sign off on your hours that can say, yes, you were there. Right. And then one of the other things to remember that this has to be for a nonprofit. So it can't be for a for-profit organization. That that's the biggest thing. Um, but Sean brings up a good point about virtual things. So the Edling Center also has an entire list of COVID-19 community resources available. Um, and these are things for you to do during the pandemic if you're not comfortable doing things in person. Um, so they, they do have a list of alternative uh, things to do to complete to, to satisfy your community service. And I will tell you, and I cannot stress this enough as an academic advisor, that your community service needs to be done and begun early, start now. You, I cannot tell you the amount of students that we have that are removed from graduation because they're finished and they forgot to do their community service hours. It will sneak up on you, it really will. And we are a faith-based university that our mission is to assist the community. So that's one thing the sisters will not budge on. You must complete community service hours. It is a requirement of your degree. If you're an undergraduate student, that's why it's listed in your degree plan. Okay, so I can't stress that enough. And let's see, any other questions, concerns? Well, I think we're good. Um, it's 20 after 10, so I think we did pretty good with timing. Didn't keep y'all too long. But if you do have any other additional questions or concerns, please reach out to us. We're all available to assist you. Um, you can reach out to your academic advisor or whoever that you saw on here today. We're all here to assist you. Um, and we appreciate you joining us on your Saturday morning. And welcome, Cardinals. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Bye-bye.